Okay, let's get started setting up our turntable animation. The first thing we're going to do is create a background for our character. Currently it's just sitting out here on the grid in the Maya scene. So I'm going to drop in a polygon cube in the center here. I'm going to go to my side view and move this up. And I want to make sure the bottom of it is sitting exactly on the grid. So I'm going to just grab the vertices with a marquee and hold down the X key and just snap those down on the grid like that. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is move the pivot point down here so when we scale it up it will scale from that point. I'm going to hold down the D key that allows us to move the pivot point and the X key simultaneously and I'm just going to snap this down onto the grid. Okay, we'll come back out to our perspective view and let's go ahead and scale this up and hit R and let's turn this on to X-ray so we can see our character inside get a sense of how he's fitting in here so I'm going to create a rectangle type room like this okay and the point of this is to create a not only a background for our character but uh, indirect source of lighting and uh, we'll be uh, kind of exploring that once we open up the render settings for mental ray let's go ahead and round out the corners here using the bevel tool so I've just selected edges and I'm going to drag a marquee around the entire cube and then hold the shift key down and just drag a marquee through the center so that deselected all of the edges I'm going to come over to my modeling toolkit scroll down here and just select bevel so we've beveled the top and the bottom I'm now gonna shift and just double click around here grabbing all the edges and we're gonna bevel those now okay let's uh, quad this off here using the multi cut tool just coming across same on the bottom Okay, and Q to get out of that. Okay, now that we've got that beveled, let's go ahead and under modeling, under mesh, we're going to smooth it. Come back to object mode and under mesh we're going to smooth that. And we can see that it has rounded the bottom out a little bit. Let's go ahead and correct for that by grabbing the vertices. I'm just dragging a marquee that selects all the vertices on the bottom here. and hit R on the keyboard and drag the Y axis down to the middle here and that flattens everything out and we can see we're just off the grid a little bit Let's hit W on the keyboard hold the X key down and just snap that down to the grid okay okay with that flattened out now let's go ahead and smooth it one more time okay and we're gonna be uh, rendering from the inside of this uh, cube, this rounded cube, sort of a sphere now. So we need to reverse the normals on this. So with the faces selected, I'm going to come under Mesh Display and reverse those. So now it's going to be black on the outside and if we come in here we should see our Lambert 1 shader on there. Okay and I'm going to scale this up just a little more. So make sure I'm in object mode and scale this up so we have just a little bit more room to, to back out here. Okay, let's go ahead and replace the material on here. So I'm going to assign a new material. I'm going to select a Lambert. And let's go ahead and clean up our history on here. Delete by type history. We've got our Lambert too, so I'm just going to call this background shader. And what I want to do, uh, this is going to be uh, creating an illumination, an indirect uh, lighting source. So I want the front of the character to be more illuminated than the back. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come out here and I'm going to select the faces on the front of this object. Make sure I'm getting all of these. Okay, 
and I'm going to assign a new material on here, another Lambert, and this is going to be BG front, and I'm going to take this all the way up to white, okay? And the back part here, let's access that, uh, BG shader, we just call this BG background, I think, BG back. We are going to darken this down to about a 75% gray or so, so right about there. Okay. All right, let's come back in. So we should see a split happening right here. Uh, we don't want to see this on our character, so what I need to do is actually uh, select this row of faces here, and I want to make sure that we're assigning that background uh, color here, the darker gray. Okay, so when we have our camera set up, we're going to only see the darker gray. Okay, all right, so we've got that. Let's come over here and rename this BG for background. Let's go ahead and save our scene now. I'm just going to version this up, our turntable. Okay, so let's go ahead and drop a light in now to illuminate our scene. So under Create Lights, I'm going to select a point light. This sends out light in all directions. I'm just going to move it up in the Y axis. And my character is about 10 units tall, so what I want to do is uh, put this up at least like twice as high or two and a half times. So let's bring this up to uh, 25 units in Y. And let's go ahead and open up our render settings. So we're going to be using Mental Ray's indirect lighting to illuminate our scene. So under here, let's go ahead and select Mental Ray. If that's not showing up for you, you can access that under Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager. And you would scroll down to Maya to MR, that's Mental Ray. Make sure you load that. Okay, and Metal Ray for Maya 2016 has been reconfigured pretty significantly. The tabs under here are much different than they used to be. So what I'm going to do is go back to uh, the 2015 and prior to settings by accessing those under Settings and Preferences, Preferences, and under Settings I'm going to go down to Rendering preferred render mental ray and I'm going to go ahead and check these two here for the legacy passes and legacy render settings. Okay, hit save. That's going to save those preferences. They're not going to show up here though until we restart Maya. So let's save our scene again. We're going to go ahead and quit out and reopen Maya and we'll have our new settings. Okay, now that we're back here, let's go ahead and open up the render settings again. Under Mental Ray, we should now see some different tabs here. Let's go ahead and start with our Common tab and make some adjustments here. The image format, we're going to render out our JPEGs. We're going to render out uh, file name, uh, then the frame number, followed by the extension. Uh, we're going to leave it padded at 4, and we're going to render out 300 frames. So 1 to 300, increment by 1. And we'll come back and uh, change this to HD 720 once we have our lighting set up. We'll just go ahead and leave that there. And under the render options, we want to make sure that we're turning off our uh, enable default light. So that's uh, Maya's default lighting in there. We want to make sure that's not influencing our overall lighting in our scene. Okay, but let's go ahead and set our guy up here about the place we're going to start and go ahead and render the first frame. Okay, so we have something that we would expect. We've got a point light sitting above the character illuminating down and it's creating uh, some very harsh shadows on the face as well as the ground. So this is where we're going to use Metal Ray's indirect lighting under the tab right here. We're going to choose Final Gather, and what this is going to do, the, the rays that are being cast by that point light in 360 degrees 
are hitting our background that we created that also goes around the character 360 degrees is going to illuminate this uh, just like in a real world setting it's going to illuminate the walls if we were standing in a, a white room or a room with uh, light colored walls the light in the room would bounce off the walls and back on to the character creating uh, an indirect or a bounce lighting source so if we go ahead and save this for a comparison and render again we should see a pretty significant difference here Okay. So we're seeing uh, the illumination of the character. Let's make sure we've got the S uh, RGB gamma turned on here. We want to correct for that. This is what it's actually going to look like when it renders out. So it's still pretty dark. Let's go ahead and make some adjustments. Uh, the things that we need to uh, look at are the shadows. We've got some pretty harsh shadows right now coming across the character. Let's go ahead and close down our render settings. Choose the point light up our attributes for that. I'm going to go ahead and bump this up to 1.5 and if we make a comparison here this should illuminate the scene a little bit more where we would expect to see it. Okay so the eyes are showing up nice now uh, the background is still sort of a nice soft gray and the next thing we need to do is just address uh, the sharpness of the shadow here okay so I'm gonna come down to shadows open this up and we're currently using uh, the ray trace shadows they're gonna give us the most realistic looking shadows on here however uh, since we're doing a turntable animation we're just really looking for a soft uh, shadow under here that shows that the character is making contact with the ground so we don't need a, a finely detailed shadow here so instead of using these, uh, if we uh, created a soft shadow with this, it would increase our render times pretty significantly. So I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to use the, the depth map shadows by checking that. The filter size is sort of the equivalent to the light radius by softening the shadows. So I'm going to take that up to, uh, let's go ahead and take that up to 6. And I'm also going to soften the shadow. Instead of having the shadow color at black, I'm going to uh, take it up and sort of lighten it. We just want a, a very soft shadow under there. So let's go ahead and render that. Okay, you can see our shadow down here now. I can actually uh, bring that up even a little bit more. Let's do a before and after. Okay, so we have just a nice soft shadow here. Here's sort of the before and after. So this is where we started. Uh, this is with the indirect lighting turned on and softening our shadows and lightening our shadows. So we're at a uh, 13 uh, seconds per frame. We've got a resolution of uh, 512 on our shadow maps. Uh, I'm not seeing any major artifacts right there. Uh, typically you want to be up to about a 1K. So I'm going to just bump this up to 1024 and Let's go ahead and save that. We'll do a comparison, see if there's much difference. Okay, so it just increased our render time uh, by two seconds. So let's go ahead and leave it at uh, 1024. And we've got everything ready as far as lighting in our background. Let's go ahead and close that down. And let's set up our turntable animation before we get to our render settings. So I'm going to select all of the objects over here in my outliner uh, minus the background and I'm gonna group those control G and this is going to be the turntable so with this selected this is where we're actually going to set our keyframes for animating the turntable I'm on frame 1 right now this is our start frame I'm gonna hit S we come over to our channel box this should all be highlighted red we'll expand this out to 300 frames the length of our shot Okay, and we'll come back down to 300 here. And we're going to rotate on the uh, Y axis. So I actually want him going counterclockwise. And we'll take that to 360. Enter and S to create a keyframe. So we've got two keyframes now. 
And if we play that, we can see the character takes off, hits full speed, and then begins to slow down uh, with the ease out at the end. So we don't want that ease in, ease out. What I'm going to do is go ahead and select the turntable level here. I'm going to open up the graph editor, hit F to frame up on that. So the default curve has got the ease in and ease out. So I'm going to just highlight that and select linear. And we can go ahead and close out of that. And if we come out here now and play that, it is now moving at a consistent rate. So this will allow you to loop the character continuously. Okay. So we've got our animation set up. And the next thing we're going to do is just set up a camera. I'm going to create a render cam under cameras. And let's go ahead with that selected. We're going to look through selected. And here is our render cam. So let's make sure we're back here on frame one. And I'm going to just be a little off-center here. Let's get our resolution set up so we can see our gate. So under common, we're going to come back down to our camera one. Uh, we can rename that in just a second. And we're going to render this out at HD 720. OK, let's rename the camera. I'm going to call that render cam. It changed it over here. That's good. Okay, let's get our resolution gate opened here so we can see what our camera sees. Okay, and I usually put a grid up here so I've got the character centered. And I usually just kind of scroll through here and I make sure that the character's not getting uh, cut off. Okay, so it looks good. Maybe just come in a little bit tighter. All right, that looks good. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Okay, and the last thing we want to do over here, we want to bump up our quality to one. And we want to make sure uh, we've got everything set up here. All of this looks good. And we want to uh, also know where our images are going to render out to. So it's important to have your project set up that it's pointing at the directory that it's going to write out to. Uh, currently mine is out on my desktop. But this is my project folder, so I want to make sure it's set there, which it is. So the path that it's writing out to is the desktop into that project folder and into the folder called images. And everything here looks good. So let's go ahead and close that down. I'm going to just select my render cam here. I've got it set up and I want to just hit a keyframe on there so in case I happen to you know bump my camera I can always just come back here and it will uh, set it up at that keyframe. Okay let's make sure we've got everything saved and we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and come under rendering and we're going to open up render batch render Everything should be good to go here, so we're just going to say batch render and close. And you can open up the script editor and it will kind of show you what's going on in your scene. It's currently uh, setting up to render with mental ray. And here it goes, it's starting to render out the first frame, so we can take a look at that in just a moment. Okay, so we've got our first frame. We can come out here and take a look at it. All right. Okay, so there's our first frame. Once we have all 300 frames rendered out, we'll come back and we'll import those into After Effects and set up to do a QuickTime movie.